Hey guys, it's me, your faithful host, Let's Play Dark Souls HD, and welcome back to our guided adventure through Elden Ring. So welcome to episode 8, where I'll show you exactly what the plan is. We'll recap on 7 real quick using the map. So in episode 7, we started here. We worked our way all the way down to Castle Morn and stopped at the front door, and we explored the entire southern region down here. And then we backtracked, we worked our way up the hill, and we did this frenzied village here. Then we dropped down into the gorge, and we did this lower forest area with the demi-human forest ruins. We cleared all of that, and it spat, at us, it spat us out up here on this big hill where the Erd tree is directly south of us. And we worked our way uphill, and we found the Church of Pilgrimage, which is where we're standing right now. So on the menu today, <clears throat> I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to ride down here and... It's all going to depend on how much damage I do. If I chuck a fireball at this uh, boss down here at the herb tree and he takes a shit ton of damage, we're just going to cheese him real quick. We're just going to get him out of the way. It's going to be free runes. You know, whatever. He's not a super challenging boss. I'll show you guys exactly how to beat him and how to avoid his attacks as we fight him, but he really is not very challenging. So I have his deathly weakness in the very palm of my hands, and we're going to use it against him. So let's go ahead and head down that way. And then once we beat him, what we will do is we will go down here where the wandering mausoleum is. And we're going to explore down here in the valley. I cannot open my map. Hold on a second. Let me get to a point where I can open the map and I'll show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. Here we go. So once I go down here to where the Erd tree is and I smash this guy... We're going to go down in here, and we're going to check the valley, because there are some, uh, some clearly depicted landmarks that might offer some interesting events and discoveries for us. So we're going to go take a look at some of that. And, uh, well, I guess I should also tell you, after that, once we've cleared basically... Hello! Once we've cleared basically all of Southern Limgrave, if I can even give you guys my plan without being bombarded by these freaks... We're going to go back and head east, is what we're going to do. Let me open my map. Come on. Piss off. There we go. Once we clear this boss, and after we finish the valley down there, that's when we're officially going to start pushing eastward. We're going to go up here, grab this map fragment, and then we're going to start exploring some of this. And then we will do Castle Morn in the south. We will complete the south for real. So this is the Erd Tree avatar and if you don't know what to do against this boss it can be quite annoying it's got some attacks that are a little bit over the top and pretty flashy but altogether futile if you know what to do so i'm gonna chuck a fireball at him we'll see which damage we do okay that's plenty yeah all right so if you have anything fire at all and i mean anything watch out for the double hit Use fire against him, because this is like the answer. Stay on torrent. Throw fire at him. Don't get caught on the pots. You know, Tim, uh, torrent is very nimble. Just bait that double hit all day, you know. So I'm going to refill on my flask. That. So this. Wait for the yellow to appear, and sprint. It'll all go right past you. Sometimes he'll do it twice in a row. It's fine. Torrent has a lot of stamina. Just sprint to avoid that. So, I'm just going to bait these melee attacks. The most he can hit is three times. So, if you see him swing that big ass thing three times, you know you're clear for a hit. So, you can fight this guy with confidence. You know, he usually will always swing at least twice. Rarely, rarely will he only swing once. Like that. So I am officially out of FP. So what I'm gonna do now is I'll wait for the wait for the gold to appear and just sprint to get away from it. Now I'm just gonna bait the attack. Let him swing twice, okay. Ooh, that's stomp. Not good. So get out of range. Bait the swing. He hit his own guy. What an idiot. <laughs> and he's down.
3,600 runes. I'll take it. And then we get the opaline bubble tier and the crimson burst crystal tier. So let's look at these. We don't have the means to use these things yet, unfortunately, but we will. So this will steadily restore HP for a time when you add it to your mixed physique, and this will significantly ne negate damage in the mixed physique. So this thing right here, the opaline bubble tier, this is arguably one of the most important items for you to pick up early in your playthrough because, like I said, we don't have the means to use these yet, but we're going to pick up an item that's called the Flask of Wondrous Physique. And there's a note that you can buy from the merchants that... I don't know exactly which merchant it is, but I do know you can buy one, a note from a merchant that will tell you that, uh, <clears throat> it'll tell you that that flask is in one of the churches of America. It just doesn't specify which one, I don't think. Uh, let's look at that, by the way. Let's see. Oh, it is this one, right here. Okay, a flask of wonders for still remains in the third church of America, north of the Mistwood. And that's why we're going this way because this is where the mist wooden stuff is it's over here so we're gonna go down that way after we explore the valley down below and we're also going to meet such a cool npc when we get up there like i'm really excited to talk to this npc because his quest line is great okay make sure i don't miss any any items that are scattered across the battlefield, they would do something like that. Distract you with a boss and then put the best fucking weapon in the game right under your, no your nose in a field, right? I mean, that sounds about like something they would do, doesn't it? When I say, when I say they, I mean from software. Okay, here we go. Let's head down this way. Alright, the Field of Butterflies. Spam triangle when you run through here, whatever your interact button is, depending on what your console or PC or whatever it is you're playing on. Um, it's free butterflies. And those butterflies are going to be what you need to get all of your fire pots, which you want as many of those as physically possible on you at all times. There's the Wandering Mausoleum. Gonna cover that in just a minute. We have absolutely no use for that mausoleum right now, but that's okay. We will. We will. I'm run down here and get this out. Oh my god. Nope. That's a hard pass, bro. Okay. So, let me get rid of this stupid bat. Right in the nuts. That felt great. We got bats up on the cliff. And then we have this, which I don't know what they're called in this game, but I'm gonna I'm gonna creep closer and you can hear. You can hear it singing, right? Alright gonna make as many fire pots as I can. I have six pots total. And I have enough for six fire pots. Okay. Five. Never mind. I can't do math. All right. These things are bad news. They are basically beefed up bats that have more health. They hit you harder and they send poison clouds at you. I don't have any more fire sling because I use them all on the boss, but I have fire pots and I'm going to utilize them right here. If I can reach. Nice. There we go. Yes, yes, yes. Don't let him fly. Keep throwing. Boom. Alright. So, the item that we looted that they were guarding was the sliver of meat, but that thing dropped a tier 6 rune. Totally worth it. That's not a 100% drop from that enemy, <clears throat> but it is a rather common drop. So, that was kind of worth taking the risk. Alright, now... We are going to work our way further down into this valley. And there is this guy here, this octopus. Um, I mean, so look, these things, you can shoot them with arrows and like, as long as you shoot them in the face, you can generally do okay against them. Like, well, I'm not, my bow isn't upgraded, but 
Whatever. Uh, let me waste a fire pot. See. Okay, so the fire pot did okay. Do you see how mobile these things are, though? Like, do you see how... Uh, I can't craft right now. Hold on. Let me unaggro this thing. Let me get more fire pots, because that's just what I'm going to do. I'm going to end up... Uh, well... I could do this. I do have these. This is a super valuable item, and we're going to want as many of these as possible later, but for the sake of just clearing this situation, I'm going to... I'm going to use mine here. I'm going to let it regenerate my FP. I'm going to get the small fries out of the way. There is a scarab down there. We want to get him, but we got to get these guys out of the way. Stupid ass dragonfly. Yee. All right. That thing healed. God, they heal. Forgot about that. All right. I really just want the scarab under the water. Like, you can see where the bubbles are, right? All right, let me do this. Let me get up behind this thing. Come on. Try to stagger this thing with a charged attack. Damn it. Of course, the small one is going to give me a hard time. It would. Ooh. Mm -mm. I really want to get this thing. Oh, the rock is going to get me killed. I need to hit this thing where it's weak, but it can be super annoying. And there he goes. He's healing. Wow. If you charge strong attacks... You can generally get these things where it counts and make them stagger, but uh, jump attacks also work, but I'm just not so sure. I have not tested it enough, I should say. There we go. The bleed. I want to out damage him before he heals. There we go go. Okay. Confirmed. Jump attacks do help. Die. God, this dragonfly is trying to get some, too. Okay, give me your disgusting ovary that I didn't ask for. And we got a dragonfly head. Great. Alright, so let's get this guy. Come here. Get our flasks back because we were clearly very sloppy against the octopus and not gonna mess with the dragonflies at all. They're a waste of effort. Don't want to deal with it. So let's go further down this way towards the mausoleum. Or rather, before we do that, this establishment right here. We are going to go to this establishment. There is a guy up there with a ballista. Please be mindful when you're running through here. Don't worry about the guy on the horse. Don't worry about any of that shit. Get over here and start climbing. None of those guys below you have ranged attacks. You're not going to have to worry about them shooting you in the ass when you get on the ladder. What you need to do though is you need to climb up here as fast as humanly possible. And we're going to have another teleportation event that's going to suck but it's really going to help us on this playthrough. So get up here, waste to this guy, right? Get rid of him, and then by now, the other guys are going to be following you. So, we got like a regular soldier who has been buffed. Get rid of him. This guy is kind of a small fry. He dies easy. Same with this guy. <clears throat> be careful not to fall. We'll deal with these guys as they come up the ladder because they do have to funnel. And the guy on the horse... I have had playthroughs where the guy on the horse will get off the horse to come up here and fight you, and that can be kind of scary because fighting a tough enemy like that in a tight space like this where you can fall to your death really sucks, but uh, alright, let's get eyes on him. There's the soldier, he's still on the horse, okay, gotcha, that's not bad. Let's do this then. If he has not gotten off the horse yet, here's what we'll do. Kind of use that against him, huh? And 
he can't block on the horse either, which is wonderful for us. Oh, you... What a nerd. Come over here, man. Oh boy, that's not gonna work, is it? Alright, let's try to get... Damn it, I'm out of FP. Alright, that's fine. I think he just healed. <laughs> Alright, fine. That's how you want to do it. Let's get rid of this crossbow guy. Get rid of this. Oh, shit! Try to get rid of that soldier first, but I don't think that's an option. Not with this guy. Alright, so fighting a Godric Knight. Not a soldier, but a knight. Fighting these guys on the horse ooh, is totally different than fighting those big oafs that have the big curved sword, right? So this guy has a spear, or rather, it's called a partisan. It's a very powerful stabbing weapon, and uh, if you get lucky, sometimes they drop it, but this guy, he's not necessarily going to be on the same level as, like, the Knight's Cavalry, or the Tree Sentinel, but he is certainly more challenging than the guys with the curved sword that you see. But, finish him down regardless, because I mean, look at us. Have you seen the damage we're doing? And you got me walking you through this. You got nothing to worry about. But, I guess uh, it's probably a good thing that we have to make this annoying climb up here again. Because <laughs> I need to try to thoroughly explain this part to you guys. So this next part of this playthrough, <clears throat> this is why I didn't want to call this an expert walkthrough. Because... As much as I want to gear this towards the players who need the help and need the guidance and want to learn something, there may be one or two things in this playthrough that I do that are slightly unorthodox, that might not seem like the safest or the smartest things to do. It might seem kind of wacky. But this is one of those particular events where you can choose entirely not to do this if you want to, but I have deemed this to be one of the smartest things you can do in the beginning of your playthrough. Intentionally get trapped by this chest <clears throat> and it's going to take us to the dragon barrel which is like a severely late game place well eh, i think this is the wrong one actually this is Landell royal capital okay yeah well false alarm okay this is the wrong chest it's okay though here's what we'll do We'll rest at this grace. I made a common LP mistake. I totally thought I was going to go to the Dragon Barrow. But... Do not worry about fighting this guy. You know what I recommend you do? Run over here and loot the chest and then just run. Go back to the grace. Don't worry about it. Here we go. Ooh! Well, he killed me. <laughs> Alright. So... New plan. Um, probably don't die on that part, maybe. like uh, I think that was probably the only attack he could have possibly done that would have killed me right there. Because it's a, it's a two-hit attack that really catches you off guard. But here's to getting my runes before I fucking die, right? I don't have to waste time opening the chest, so I can just grab them and turn around. Alright. Okay. Not trying to fight this guy. Not fine. Not trying to lose my runes either. You know what I'm saying? All right. We don't want to mess with that guy. That's. I know what you're thinking. He's a regular ass like fire golem. No, he's not. He is a boss fire golem. He has a lot of health, and we don't have nearly the damage to take him down because I don't think bleed procs on those guys. They don't bleed like fire runs through their veins. Anyway, we wanted that chest anyway because talisman we got slowly restores our hp that's what the fuck i'm talking about we do have one that raises our maximum hp but i don't want that i want the one that's slowly going to heal me over time you feel me just to give you an idea of where we are in the map that's how far away it took us right like the other one <clears throat> excuse me 
The other one took us down here, to the Celia Crystal Tunnel. This trap chest took us all the way here. Like, what the hell, right? Okay. So... This is the closest grace we have, is the one at the top of the hill. But we can make this work. Alright, we're going to explore a little bit more of the valley. <clears throat> and, uh... The chest that I'm looking for in particular is going to be off in this direction. Um, I just prepped you guys for something completely false. <laughs> it's not even gonna, not going to happen in this episode now. Um, <clears throat> I thought that was the chest that was going to take us to the Dragon Barrow. And those of you that are uh, not new to uh, Elden Ring, those of you who are on your, like second or third playthrough or whatever have already are familiar with playing through the game probably know exactly what I was referring to I was going to go down to Fort Ferreth and was going to suicide my way through the giant bat fort and get the uh, the source the source seal which is 150% the best talisman in the game it should take precedent over any other talisman you equipped at all times it is that good and we're gonna get it pretty early in the playthrough and it's difficult. It's a suicide mission, 100%, but we're going to do it. So, we have enough to level up twice. I'm going to go up to 14, because I want to be able to equip the crossbow that we have, which needs 14 strength. We're not going to equip it right this second, because it will over-encumber us, and I refuse to fat roll. But let's just kind of scale the outside of this real quick. Look for any hidden items that might be tucked away there always are there's an owl right there you could get another egg if you needed it okay gold tinged extrament there we go see there we go we ended up finding something valuable so let's address the wandering elephant in the field uh, the wandering mausoleum the way you get these to land is you attack the skulls there, the, the cursed skulls that are covering their feet, you just kind of like whack some of those off their feet and they will land. Um, the reason I'm not going to do that is because this is not an event that I require at the moment. Like, there's truly nothing we can do with that because the, the purpose that the Wandering Mausoleum serves is to... You will not do that. The purpose that it serves is to duplicate boss souls and we don't have a boss soul to duplicate and i'm telling you what the first boss soul that we get we sure as hell aren't going to duplicate i'm probably going to pop that bitch just for runes because there's not a single thing i want to do with uh the first great soul we get it's not going to drop anything of use to my build so there should be another merchant over here and we're gonna we're gonna see if he has anything useful. Well, there's been an age since I've seen a customer. How can I help here at the end of the earth? You can help me by selling me notes. Here we go, the walking mausoleum. So I basically just told you what this does, right? Like, we're gonna buy it anyway because I love collecting those. And he sells. Tier 2 smithing stones. He's got three of them. Let's buy them. Because the more you have, the better. That. I need that. Oh, Hold on. Safe. We are going to pop a rune. That gave me exactly 100 runes less than what I needed. Fuck you, Elden Ring. Just so we can buy the lantern. This is super important. This completely gets rid of your need for the torch. It's wonderful. When you see the lantern, buy it immediately. And he also sells the Zweihander. This is your first opportunity to have a colossal weapon if you weren't lucky enough to get the Fire Golem Halberd. Um, Zweihander is very, very good. It's the lightest of the colossal weapons. It only weighs 15 and a half units only. That's heavy as shit. But, uh, if you're wanting to use an Ultra Greatsword, if that's your style of play, this is your first opportunity to buy one. Alright, 
and I know there's gold anywhere. I know there's a grace. All right, let's have a look. See at this note, huh? Let's just like do an overview of our notes real quick. So we just bought this one. To stop the mausoleum stride, you'll need to clean up around its feet first. Attack the skulls. So this one here, the heads of the stone digger trolls bear old wounds. So the stone digger trolls, essentially what I've been referring to as giants. Um, if you attack them in the head, you can really get an opportunity to do more damage. Even just a well-timed arrow to the face can really change the fight between you and a giant. Land squirts are soft where they touch the ground and poison will cause them to rupture. So this is an interesting note. Um, a lot of people are going to mistake land squirts for those like octopus things that we've been fighting. The little black tentacle things that crawl across the ground. That is actually not the case. The land squirts are actually those round, kind of like chubby cactus looking things that spit poison out cl like constantly, the poison clouds. Not the flowers, but the things that were out in uh, Agil Lake. And Vadi actually just released a video showing a really cool mechanic against them that I was not aware of, where you can use poison, just like the note says, to make them rupture. I'll test it out for you guys when I use poison cloud against them later. You'll see what I mean. It's going to freak you out. Okay, slay the Demihuman mobs leader first, and the rest will lose hope and panic. We explained that mechanic in the Demihuman ruins in the last video. Someone lurks among the waypoint ruins on the road through Limgrave. That is your warning about the Knight's Cavalry, I believe. And then we read this one, the Flask of Wonders Physique. The Third Church of America is going to be way up this way. So, that's okay. We're literally about to head out that way, like... It's gonna be great. So once we start pushing our way towards like Eastern Limgrave, which we're gonna do in just a second, uh, things really start to liven up. There's a lot of action out there. I just want to do my due diligence. I want to explore the cliff sides, and I know, I know this this eats up our time together, and uh, it may seem pointless, but I really do just feel better exploring the map and appreciating it for what it is. By making sure I go everywhere to make sure we don't miss out on anything. And what do you know? Our exploration has been rewarded. It's payday. So, make note of the wolf up there on the cliff. He's not going to aggro right now. Like, we can pretty much safely pick these up. We might aggro, like, one or two, like, smaller wolves out here. But you can pick these up while you're on torrent, as long as you're touching the tombstones. And what a morbid thing to think about robbing the dead, but I mean, hell, what are they gonna do with it? I got stats to level, bro. I got shit to buy. Okay, so I'm glad we did that. I'm certain there's nothing over here, though. Like, 100% certain. Oh, shut up. Don't you be crying to me, bro. Come here. You are one hit away from death. Come here. There we go. Now, I wish these guys would give up and stop fighting when their pack leader dies, but that's just not the case, man. Wolves, like, they will fight to the last breath. It's quite admirable, if nothing else. All right, and the last thing that I need to do that's just going to involve a long sprint here is... There should be one more item out on this beach that I want to pick up. And it's... It's hidden within a large group of enemies. I don't think it's right here. Nope. Okay. And there it is. It's going to be out there. And like I mentioned before, these guys in particular, like these slow-moving guys with the grab attacks, just stay mounted when you're around them because they can't grab you while you're on torrent. And the grab attack is dangerous. It will take a lot of your health. Here we go. Bam. Give me that golden rune. It's payday, boy. Uh, okay. Change plan. There's one with glowing eyes. It's payday. Damn it. That is not the one I aimed for. Nor is that. You. In front. Yeah. Grab attack doesn't work on Torrent, pal. Didn't you know? There we go. Okay, so he didn't drop a lot. <laughs> he dropped significantly more than the other ones, but still. And then we got another golden rune. Okay. 
And let's uh, let's clear this end of the beach just to make sure that we're not missing anything. And we should be good to head back. And instead of running back, time is of the essence. I respect your guys' time for watching me, so we will just warp back. There's two of these. That means there's definitely something of value over here. I hear it. I hear a scarab. I hear the... I hear the sparkle. Oh, Jesus. Okay, this is... This is 100% death waiting to happen, but... Come on, let's get it. Oh, golden rune. Okay, a tier two. Not really... Not really that worth it, but... <laughs> we got it. <laughs> we can say we got it, and we don't have to go struggle to get it again. No, oh, I don't even care about you. I have max flasks. Whatever. And then we have our Everjail over here, which I believe you have to use a stone key to unlock this one. The Weeping Everjail. So this one, I think, should be... This should be the boss that uses gravity magic. <clears throat> the Everjail bosses are a little more challenging. And... Hello. The Fourth Church of America. Okay, so this is not the one that's going to have the Wondrous Physique, but regardless... We're going to get this grace, and we're going to get this other sacred tier. Bam! It is money. And we're going to rest, and we will use this thing. Nope, not that. We will use this thing right away. Boom. So we are, look at that. In the course of just a couple episodes, we are already up to plus three on our flask. That means it's going to heal us plenty. So, it may not seem like the most orthodox method or way of doing this, but I think what I'm going to do with the Everjail bosses is I think I'm going to just make like a dedicated video out of those guys. Like, I'll just do Everjail after Everjail, like maybe three or four of them in a single video. Here's what I was looking for, this guy. Okay, oh, there it is, the tower. Finally, I can return to our home, bathed in rays of gold. Uh, I hope it doesn't mean that, like, destroyed tower up there, like we just went there, the Tower of Return. Yeah. Alright. Anyway. I... You know what? Now I'm having doubts. I feel like that was the right tower that was supposed to go to the place that I was sure it would take me. And now I'm having these doubts. I feel like... Um, what am I trying to say here? I feel like they may have changed it in the patch. And that's the only reason it's different. Now I feel paranoid. That's not cool at all. Alright, anyway... I probably shouldn't be worrying about that right now. I should be focused on this. So, this thing. Hit it a few times and then get out of the way. It uh, is going to be raining magic damage. Now, ideally, you want to get rid of these guys. They're not difficult to kill. Again, this is a new type of enemy we've never fought. They're going to look kind of weird. They're a little bit different than what we've encountered. They have four arms. They do hit kind of fast. But these are the ones you want to worry about. Not so much the sword ones, but the spear guys suck. Try to, like, dash in and get them with speed and then kind of get away. Because as you can see, they do, like, spinning attacks. You're almost guaranteed to get hit. So I recommend just, like, dashing in with one hit and just keep moving. Whereas these guys, you can just R1 them. Just one, two. So get away. Avoid the counter. Wait for him to stop attacking. And then, bam. Alright, there we go. Not bad. And then the archers are kind of like... Eh, they're kind of whatever. As long as you... Oh, poor Torrent. That looks really painful. I have one right in my solar plex, and I still feel worse for Torrent. That's going, like, right into the back of the neck, man. He deserves better. You know what? Here, let me fix you up, buddy. There we go. Get rid of that shit. 
So we'll get a couple hits in. Get out of the way so we don't get blasted with the magic. Get a couple hits in. There we go. The magic does not disappear just because he dies. Still get out of the way. Alright, and the significance of this is that we can continue Selen's questline, who is the sorcery vendor that we ran into, if you remember. Now, it's not going to really do us any good to be down here right now, because she's not going to say anything to us. So, she... You're wondering how she can be in two places at once, and I explained it before. It's actually a spirit version of her that we ran into in the previous video, where we talked to her the first time. This is her corporeal flesh, her physical form. So, she sees us as just like one of the people that's torturing her, I guess. This is why we really came down here. I just want to pick up this sorcery. Not because we're going to use it, but just to get the item while we're here. We'll be able to actually talk to her down there and further her quest line once her spirit form advances a little further. Okay. Why do I feel like that tower took us to the Dragon Barrow? Maybe I am getting it mixed up, I don't know. I'm not wrecking my brain over this any further. So we have officially cleared this entire place. Like, everything is clear through here. Now what we're going to do is we're... This is probably the closest point for us. We're going to head up this way. Um, False. Hey, it's Selen. What do you know? <laughs> Talk to her, there just because. Are. Shall we commence the left? Give her the scroll, huh? Ah, is that a scroll? Takes me back to my academy days. Very well. Hmm, this is sorcery with which I'm not entirely unfamiliar. I'll be sure to incorporate it into one of your lessons. Never lose that inquisitive spirit, my apprentice. All right. And now we have more spells, so now we can do Glint, ba Glint Blade Phalanx, which is a great entry-level spell. It only takes 22 points of intelligence to get to, it's, it's pretty easy. You can do uh, Carrion Slicer, which is uh, a melee attack for intelligence builds, so... You get these, these two new abilities that are pretty useful, and uh, they're not without their uses. I, I would imagine if you want to do an intelligence build relatively early on, you can't go wrong with that. So... <clears throat> this, I think, is where we needed to go instead. So, let's go Aggie Lake South. <clears throat> and I'll show you guys what my idea is. I'll show you what I'm thinking here. I'm thinking we go this way, cut down through the valley here. You know, because what we can do is we can run up through here, and just before the bridge, we can, get, we can uh, cut down here along the coast and work our way down. I think that'd be the smartest route for us. So, let's do that. So, essentially, all we have to do is follow the main road, and we're just going to start heading south again, but then we're going to cut around here. Some landmarks that I'm really wanting to get through in this video is... Uh, just so we can have them to further some quest lines is the Mistwood Ruins. It's a very dangerous place. I don't recommend uh, fighting anything <laughs> in there, but uh, it's okay to just run through. So we need to hit that place first, which is dead ahead of us. It's this uh, thicket of yellow here. I'm not worried about these wolves. I am going to rob them, though. Sorry guys, this shit's mine. Mine, mine, mine. It is free money, ow. Jeez. There we go. Alright, that was relatively painless. Got bit a couple times, but nothing ridiculous. Let's hit this shore real quick, see if there's anything out here. Okay, we got one item. Grab it. It's totally a trap, but whatever. Golden Realm. <laughs> it was a tier one. Are you kidding me? <laughs> wow. They 100% did that to be assholes. Can confirm. 
Let me heal. That was bullshit. Alright. Hi, turtle. Stay away from that big mean thing on the beach, okay? He's trouble. Here we go. I'm thinking this is the fort. I'm thinking that's the fort I need to go into to get the, the chest that I'm looking for. Maybe. Alright, so. First things first. Oh, welcome, dear customer. Yes, right this way. Right this way. Welcome, valued customer. Come, trade in our wandering emporium. Please, buy something. I'm hungry. I've been hungry so long. Please. I've met many different kinds of salesmen in my life, and let me just tell you something, man. I've never once closed a deal with the pity clothes. All right, so the important thing that this guy sells is he's got these two cookbooks. He's got a nomadic one, a tier five, and then he has a tier three armorer's cookbook. And this kind of stuff can be annoying, right? Like it can be really irritating to read this stuff and be like, well, what does it even mean? Like, what does the tier mean? Why does it matter? And I'll do my best to explain those things to you over the course of the playthrough as we come across them. But all you need to know is that you press square on them. That's it. Just press square on them, and then bam. This one in particular is important, because we can create Exalted Flesh, which raises our attack. That's a regular item that I like to have on me constantly through the playthrough. But this one is the Beastler Pot, which is just a pot that you throw, and things of beastly nature, like demi-humans and bears, wolves, stuff like that, animals in general, will be lured to that pot. It's really nice. We are 100% going to buy these. I'm going to pop some soul items, rune items, just so we can buy all of those. I'll use my big boy. Ah, how nice these. Okay. So, the St. Trina's arrows, I was talking about these in a previous video. Sleep buildup is insanely good in this game. It is not to be underestimated. You can do crazy things with the sleep application. And I think I'll buy these two. Since I know I'm going to use them. I should really be saving these runes for leveling up in a pinch. But I think I would rather just buy these while I'm here. And then he has three shards. Yeah, why not? Let's take these off his hand, just so we can have them, right? And he also sells the Trina's Lily, which is used to create the St. Trina's Arrow. That's the potent ingredient that causes the sleep effect on the arrow, is the lilies, which is why I've been picking those up every time we see them. Alright, so here's where we're on the map. We're just going to head over here. Like, I'll create a marker. Just so we can see it on the map, so you can see it right there on my cardinal directions as a guide because it's kind of hard to see in this place and there is an exceedingly dangerous enemy in these woods which is called a rune bear and I call them nightmare bears because the first time I played this game there's the howling by the way that's the whole reason we want to come here is to experience that howling we need to hear that at least once in order to activate this quest line that I want to do Give me either an Ash of War or an Upgrade. Ground Slam. Nice. Okay. We have Demi-Humans in here. We have Demi-Humans. We have Bats. You can see a couple of them over there. We have Regular Bears. And then we have Rune Bears. And I gotta tell you, if there's anything I don't want to toil with in this place, it's these fucking things. The Rune Bears. I mean, look at that shit. It's so stupid. Like, they're so fast. They can catch you like nothing. Like, they're <laughs> they're basically as fast as Torrent. It's bullshit. Alright, so we got the map fragment. We get our little marker to go away. And the regular bears in here aren't bad. And the demi-humans are wimpy and easy to beat. But, like, just these things. Don't mess with these things. I'm going to steal this item next to him. 
just because it's a badass cookbook and because we can get away you have plenty of scarabs in here in this particular area like surrounding this thing that we're about to, to touch right here there's like four scarabs surrounding this thing right so this is the Seofria River well I do not recommend going down this elevator you can if you want to like it's 100% up to you like if you step on that plate it'll take you down but uh, I don't recommend going down there not in this stage of the playthrough like if you've been following closely with me if you're about the same level as me and uh, you've been kind of doing things similar to me I don't recommend it I just don't like don't even waste your time going down there to get the grace it's just uh, it's a whole bunch of nope if you if you're picking up what I'm putting down it's way too difficult so we found the map there's a minor Erd tree right where we are but there's no boss there should not be a uh, what you call it there should not be an Erd tree boss over here by this minor Erd tree and we have another one of these things right here with uh, I guess I can show you the mechanic press triangle next to these and one of these guys materializes and you can follow him his little footsteps will appear on the ground and he'll occasionally reappear after a dozen steps or so and you just keep following him he'll lead you right into bears and stuff so you kinda have to be careful but I'm not gonna follow him because I know how to get where he's trying to lead us like I know my way through these misty ruins and the big event that I wanted to happen in here was the howling that's what I was waiting for so guess we need to work our way towards this tower is what we really need to do because maybe that fort is where my uh, special chest is that I was thinking of I really am paranoid about that I'm gonna have to reread the patch notes because I'm like I'm feeling real strange about this one guys I feel like I knew what was there I feel like I was certain that that chest was gonna take me where I thought it would and it apparently does not it's different uh, be forewarned trying to get the items that are near the crabs is significantly more dangerous than trying to get the items near the octopuses because or octopi I don't know the plural those things are oh goodness let me up those things are significantly less um, aware than the crabs are like the crabs are Quite a bit sharper. <laughs> oh, give me the item. Strip of white flesh. All right. More crafting. Uh, the crabs are sharper and they're faster. And they are just considerably more dangerous than the giant octopus things. If you want my honest opinion on that. And we'll go ahead and run over here. We're just going to scale this beach really quick because this is what we want. This is the third Church of America. And we want to come here because this is where our Flask of Wondrous Physique is going to be. And this is going to be a super duper important item. Like detrimental to the playthrough. So let's get the craze. Let's go pick up our flask. Oh, crimson. That it gives us a uh, one of the items you can mix into the flask. So the flask of wondrous physique. Or physic. I don't know how you want to pronounce that. I'm going to equip that right away. Bam. I always put it in the third slot. I want these right next to each other when I want to use them. I'm gonna show you what we can do with this thing as soon as I grab the tier. There we go. Look at that. We're about to get our flask to plus four. We are just steady mobbing in this playthrough okay not level up I want to increase the potency of my flasks great now we have this option mix wondrous physique so now you can put whatever you want into this thing I think these are your two smartest options you want to do half health and you want to do the bubble the bubble is a giant middle finger to your enemies like this bubble basically makes it to where you can fully tank a charged hit from a boss like to the face and lose almost no health it's wonderful so I would reckon you can mix any two that you find and you will find like 14 of them across your playthrough 
So I recommend this guy, which will do half your health, because half health is better than steadily restoring your HP. And you can mix these two if you want. Like if you say no to the bubble, which I don't know why you would, you can mix these two if you want. But uh, I recommend half health and the bubble. Because the bubble is life. It's going to make like some of our worst encounters so much easier. Did you notice we have the option to talk to Melina again? Spoken echoes of Queen Marika linger here as well. Shall I share them with you? Of course. Very well. In Marika's own words, my lord and thy warriors, I divest each of thee of thy grace. With thine eyes dimmed, ye will be driven from the lands between. Ye will wage war in a land afar, where ye will live and die. Well, perhaps that might serve you in lieu of a maiden's guidance. Interesting. So she was, she was sending people off to a land where they will fight a war and die. And I believe that to be where the giant fight of Landell happened. Wow, this place is really lighting up. wonder if that was the light of the moon that just poured over this valley. That's really pretty. Alright. Goodbye, Melina. Thank you for the, <clears throat> the lore tidbits. I'm enjoying them quite a bit. I hope you guys are too. Okay, so. Let's take a look at where we are. We basically just kind of like ran through here. There's more areas within the Mistwood Ruins that we really do need to cover, but something I want to do right now is we're going to go back to Kale, the merchant. He's the very first merchant we talked to of the nomadic lineage. Wait, weren't you? Well, you're back. Care to buy something? So check this out. He now has a dialogue option that says about the howling in the Mistwood. Once you go down there to the Mistwood and you hear the howling happen, that's how you trigger this quest line. The howl of a wolf in the Mistwood. I suppose he must still be skulking about. I know. Why not meet him for yourself? Next time you hear the wolf's howl, make this signal right under the source. Oh, don't fret. There is nothing to fear. I just have an inkling the two of you might hit it off. And he gives you a very particular gesture, the finger snap. Goodbye for now. So this is an interesting event that's happening right now. Why does Kale know about the howling? Why does, why does he know who's howling? He referred to him as still skulking about. It's as if he knows who this person is personally. And... Why does he think that we will hit it off with that person? Why does he think that we are going to jibe with the Howler, right? So, now what we're going to do is we're going to head back over here. And we're going to trigger this quest, this quest line before we uh, end the video. So this is going to require us to go back into the scary, foggy forest. That's okay. Take my hand, your boy LP's got you covered. Ain't nothing bad gonna happen to you as long as I'm here. Follow me. So here's what we want to look for. The NPC we're looking for is going to be right, right around in, if I can get it, um, barely, there we go, about right in there. So I'll put the marker on, and again, bats, rune bears, regular bears, whatever it is you, you see, don't fight it. Just save yourself the trouble. None of these enemies are worth fighting because they don't drop a crap ton of runes or anything. Like, they, they, they don't drop any special items. Like, do yourself the greatest favor. Don't worry about these assholes. Just run by. Um, there's the howling. I do want to grab 
some of these items. Even if it's just a rune plus one, or a tier one rune, it's still fine. So, it would appear that we are near the heart of the howling. However, you need to be very, very fucking careful on this part. Here's why. This is the Mistwood Runes. I'm gonna grab this rune. Without just dying like an idiot. There he is, behind the tree. You got a bear in here that's usually sleeping, right? And he is guarding an item, but here's what you want to do. We are right under the source of the howling. So, without waking the bear, I'm going to come over here, stand right about in this spot. And I'm going to equip my snap that I got from Kale. Let's use it. All right, so did you hear the growling that happened right there? So the howling has stopped, and then there was like sort of a growl, and then somewhere right around here, we should see him. He does not always drop in the same place, though, is the problem. Like, you do kind of have to look for him sometimes, but whatever you do, don't aggro the bear. I would recommend staying prone and sneaking around until we find our friend that we're looking for. And you can't miss him. When you see him, you're immediately going to be like, okay, that's freaking cool. If he would show up. Good lord. I know I heard him. He's probably on the other side of the building. Oh, I do not want to aggro the bears. No, thank you. Come on, there he is. Okay. I was simply on the wrong side of the building. Okay. This is who we were looking for. Who goes there? Kali sent you, did he? Ever the bloody busybody. Hmm. Maybe to him you don't seem so strange. The name's Blythe. I'm looking for a man who goes by Darwin. He fled somewhere nearby. Or so I've heard. Come tell me if you find him before I do. I can offer you ample reward. Okay, so. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, meet Blyde. He's for sure my favorite NPC in this game. I mean, just look at him. The, the Artorius references are thick with a little bit of Berserk sewn in there. He is such an awesome NPC. His questline is as magnificent as it is tragic. And we're going to see it through to the end. Darawil is nothing but a traitor, and in need of a fitting end to his tale. Darawil is nothing and in need of... Okay, so that's all we're going to get from him right now. So I'm going to be incredibly stupid, and I'm going to sneak in here where this bear is, and I'm going to try to not lose my life. Um, here's the problem with this part. I mean, you see, do you see what's going on here, right? Like, there. We have to get down there. He's guarding a basement. There are these lilies nearby. I'm not necessarily worried about those as much as I like them. See, this guy's got the right idea. <laughs> Make no sound. Um, we need to squeeze down in there without getting murdered by the bear. But the problem is... There have been a couple times where I've attempted this, and the bear, like, I don't know. it. The arm of the bear kind of clips me out of the way, and suddenly I can't get down in time, and it just kills me. We're going for it. Whatever. Okay. That was easy. I made a big deal out of that, and it was nothing. Whatever. The bear has a ranged attack that you need to be worried about. The Axe Talisman. So this is a great talisman. We can only equip one right now, and I would still take this over anything else, but your charged attacks will do more damage with this talisman. And uh, that, I will equip that for certain occasions, but uh, it's good to have. Okay, so now, I'm going to get on the torrent and just get ready to run, man. Do not fuck 
with the bear. Don't try to fight it. They do way too much damage. They're incredibly fast. They're hard to hit because they don't stop attacking you once they start swinging. And it's just like, it's this whole thing, it sucks. We get this sacrificial twig, which is basically a ring of sacrifice, if you're familiar with the item. And dark souls. All right. Let me run over this way to the spirit spring, where there shouldn't be any enemies nearby. Okay. So. You open my map. Blyde, the half-wolf. He is still there. So, he mentioned Darwill. Darwill is actually a boss that we're going to fight. And we'll be able to summon Blade for him, and I'm going to do that specifically for the quest line. But for now, we're going up. Oh, hi. I didn't need to kill you. I did anyway. Okay, we got another Erd tree in the distance, and we already ransacked this group of coffins, I think. I think. Yeah, we did. Okay, cool. Um, ah, yes, I recognize this. <laughs> All right. So we're back onto the main road. This is where Aggie Lake is. Shit. I'm not trying to fight anybody. Where are all these losers coming from? All right. I'm going to rest at a grace real quick. We're going to reset these guys. Okay. So... This episode, I should very well end right here if I'm smart, because I need to be up for work in like four hours, but this is literally bothering me. Like, it is driving me crazy. So... Okay. I'm gonna start here. I'm already here. God, why did I do that? See, that's how tired I am. <laughs> My brain isn't working right now. Okay. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to do exactly what we did before. I'm going to follow the road down, and we're going to go to that fort, okay? And we're going to clear it out, and yes, it's going to extend this video a little bit, which I was trying not to do. I promised I wouldn't, but it's just really bothering me. I need to figure this out. There's only so many chests in here that are traps that will take you to certain places, right? The chest in Patch's little cave that he was tempting us with takes us here into the middle of the Mistwood ruins, right? Like, I know that for a fact. And the chest in the bottom of the Dragon Ruins, out on the lake, takes us to the Celia Crystal Tunnel, which is the place where I said, don't fight in this place, just run. So the Tower of Return chest was supposed to take us to the Dragon Barrows. I'm certain of it. But I, I guess not. I'm just... All right. I gotta do this. I gotta do this. I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna clear this entire place. I'm just gonna spend five minutes powering my way through it until I find a chest. And all I'm saying is... If I don't find a chest up here that takes me to the Dragon Barrows, I'm going to question everything. And there are Ballista here, but as long as you sprint with Torrent, you can evade them. So let me get this here and get our Golden Seed. Pumpkin Head is a fucking pain in the ass, but... Not worried about it. Okay. I know this is... Totally not orthodox, I know, guys. I shouldn't be speed running through this. I shouldn't be... I should not be trying to clear this place like this. But... I'm in a hurry. I really... God, this is literally like amateur shit. This is how people die in Souls games, but... <laughs> not me. Oh, oh shit. The Blood Blade, that's right. So, this I believe is Darawil. I think pretty damn sure this is Darawil. I could potentially be messing up another questline by doing this, but it's uh, 
It's not a quest line that offers very much lore or importance, so it's a risk I'm willing to take. When we got that ability, he was using the Bloody Slash. It's pretty cool. I may as well grab this. Blood Rose. Craftable item. Something that we want. Alright. So if there's not a chest up here that takes me to the place I thought we were supposed to go, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm officially going to question my knowledge of this game. Okay, no enemies. Alright. Nope. See? What the fuck? Hey, all right. That's, uh, <laughs> that's weird. Uh, and there's no other chest. I mean, shit. All right. Um, ay, ay, ay. that is 100% it. That is the place. Oh, maybe I'll look on the wiki or something after I end this video, but... <clears throat> Damn. I wonder, is it... That has to be it. Yeah, this is Fort Height. Hmm. Alright. Well, let's work our way back down. That is so strange. I wonder... Now I'm starting to, like, get paranoid and wonder, like, what else did they change in the patch that's going to change how I do <clears throat> my playthrough. We may as well get our loot. We earned it. My speed running through the tower. <laughs> okay, look at these guys. Oh, okay. Die in one hit. It's not bad. The rats are quite tanky in this game. Okay, I've got us a cookbook. Don't worry, I'll make sure to... I'm not missing this opportunity. <laughs> anyway. I'll, uh... I'll make sure to look through all the cookbooks and stuff and show you guys exactly what it is we can craft, and uh, we'll go pretty in-depth with that as well. Wow. Even my running strong attack won't do it in one hit with those guys. That's crazy. How about down here? All right. This is a relatively quick one. This is a great spawning place for these blood roses, by the way. They come back every single time. And I think there's an item out here on the roof. The very time I did this encounter on my regular character, the uh, this was how I did this. I ended up pulling the knight out here and just kind of cheesed him. <laughs> we ended up clearing that super duper fast. And then, well, we got Pumpkin Head out here and a couple other guys that might give us a hard time if we didn't know they were there. Okay. So, yeah, I am, uh,. I guess I'm going to have to refer to the wiki or something, because I am legitimately stumped right now. Like, within your first three cursed chests, you should 100% be able to go. To the Dragon Barrows, and... I guess that's just not the case this time. So... Not in an intentional effort to waste your guys' time at all, but for my own curiosity, because I want to... I quite enjoy spending as much time as I can with you guys. I really like drawing these videos out and giving you this uh, little bit of uh, extra time with me. 
so we can there's a cave up there by the way very easy to miss but we'll make sure to cover it um, yeah I'm not necessarily in a hurry to desert you guys so in the interest of spending additional time together uh, I'm going the wrong way we're going to run to this fort one more time because I want to see if like I don't know it does it matter at daytime or nighttime like does that it's, it's nighttime right now it was in the middle of the day the last time we used this I want to see if like maybe daytime and nighttime can affect what these chests do and where they take you I'm wondering if that's the case because I will die on this hill as I am literally physically on a hill I 100% believe that this is where that chest was. Ow. Didn't I just tell you guys that guy won't shoot you if you climb these ladders? <laughs> How full of shit am I really? <laughs> Find out next time on Dragon Ball Z. Okay. Do your worst. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. This is... I mean, this is it. This is Landell Capital. I mean, this is, like, basically the second to last place in the game. This is super late game. This, uh... I want to point something really cool out. This dead dragon right here. You can't really see what's going on, but uh, there's, like, a giant spear weapon sticking out of the ground near the dragon, and you can 100% get that. That is going to be one of our weapons. Rest assured of that. You know what? You know what? You know what? I got it. I got it, I got it, I got it. Let me rest at this grace. I know exactly what the hell I need to do. I've made a huge mistake. I know exactly where I need to go. We need to go... to the third church of america yes 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 it's all coming back to me i'm telling you guys it pays to have a sharp memory because i might i might have just fixed my boo-boo and i might know exactly what i need to do there should be a teleporter over here where are you i know you're over here somewhere it's super duper easy to miss it's like hidden i mean you can't really miss it because, like, look, I mean, it's got... Aha! Uh -huh. This might be what I need. This might be the teleporter. So maybe it wasn't a chest that takes you there. Maybe it's one of the teleporters, which there are tons of these on the playthrough. Ha 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 ha. Aha. Interesting. Forgive me, ladies and gentlemen. I've made a terrible mix-up. This is uh, this is the place I was talking about. This is this is Grail's Dragon Burrow and uh, Dragon Barrow, and it is very incredibly important to go here early game for me. May not be for you because you're gonna see how crazy the shit is that we're supposed to do. Once we're doing it, it may seem very unethical, we'll say, and uh, might not seem like good advice. It's going to be incredibly suicidal and stupid. Might even take a few tries, but when you see what we get, it'll be worth it. It'll completely change your playthrough in the beginning. It'll set you off to such a better start. Absolutely do it before you go into Stormvale, if you can. But uh, we're going to cover that in the next episode. So... Sorry I kept you guys over again. Try to keep these right around an hour, but I'm clearly very bad at that. Um, and sorry I led you guys on a wild goose chase trying to find this teleporter that would take us to this place. But you'll see why it's important. You'll see why I was stressing about it. And you'll see why I'm glad we're here in the next episode. So, 
Thank you guys so much for joining me on episode 8 of Elden Ring. I've been your faithful host, Let's Play Dark Souls HD, and I will see you guys in the next episode.